He is the father of modern physics and, in fact, of the modern natural science. He strived to find the truth more passionately than anyone else. Albert Einstein, the great physicist of the 20th century, said about Galilei, who is by right regarded as one of the founders of the New Times Science. Galileo Galilei was born on February 15, 1564, in the old Italian town of Pisa. His father, an impoverished Florentine nobleman, was a man of broad education and the author of historical and musical works. He wanted Galileo to be a physician and sent him to the University of Pisa. However, Galilei was not attracted by medicine. He found more pleasure in reading Euclid's treatises in geometry and Archimedes' mechanics. After all, Galileo abandoned the university for exact sciences. The young scientist's works had been held in great esteem by the professionals who assisted him to head the Department of Mathematics in the University of Pisa and then in the University of Padua. Later, Galilei became famous as a great scientist, an educated man, a good interlocutor, and a skillful debater. Besides, he got a glory of a writer and a musician. He was brilliant at playing string instruments and clavichord. He succeeded in drawing, painting, and writing sonnets. Although Galilei had all these talents, he spent most of his lifetime in poverty and debts. Perhaps the reason was that he had to support his sisters demanding a proper dowry, his good-for-nothing brother, a squabble mother, and his own children, two daughters and a son. Galilei's wife finally married another man, having deposed their children in her husband's charge. He did not want, and he was not able to adapt himself. He often broke the rules of common sense and practical foresight, and often happened to be a victim of university intrigues. The main site of Pisa, Galilei's native town, is the famous Falling Tower. It is known not only for its inclined position, but also as a place where Galilei conducted his physical experiments, throwing balls of different weight from its top. According to Aristotle, the greatest ancient scientific authority, heavy objects should fall faster than light ones. However, Galilei's experiments proved that they reached the foot of the tower almost simultaneously. The laws of falling objects discovered by Galilei contradicted the views of Aristotle, approved by the church and undoubted for two millennia. It was extremely important that Galilei used experimental data as a new kind of arguments in scientific debates. Since then, any scientific argument is considered to be proved not from authorities' agreement, may they be Aristotle or fathers of church, it is proved only if confirmed by the results of the scientific experiment. In 1609, having heard of the sight tube invention, Galilei improved the device by producing a model similar to the modern telescope with more than 30-fold magnification. He was the first man to direct the sight tube to the sky for scientific purposes, making the knowledge horizon significantly wider. During the very first months of observation, Galilei discovered mountains on the moon, four satellites of Jupiter, and found that the huge white stripe in the sky, the Milky Way, consists of multiple separate stars. Everyone was highly impressed by Galilei's discoveries in astronomy. They proved that the Earth was not the center of the universe, but the same celestial body as the other planets. A little later, Galilei found the spots on the Sun, and their motion let him make a conclusion that the celestial body rotates on its axis he discovered phases of Venus that sometimes looked like a narrow crescent and sometimes like a semicircle or almost a full disk. These discoveries proved the views of Copernicus that the planets revolved around the Sun. Galilei dedicated several decades of his life to support Copernicus's theory of heliocentric system of the world. His generalizing treatise, A Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems, published in 1632, was a summary of this work. The Church put this scientific work into attention at once. Galilei was ordered to appear before the Inquisition Holy Office in Rome. The scientist was accused of propagation of heretic ideas of Copernicus's teaching.
the 70-year-old man, down on his knees, said the humiliating words of recantation proposed to him on June 22, 1633, in the same church where Giordano Bruno had heard his death sentence. After that, the scientist was prohibited from meeting his friends and consulting his students. He was put under home arrest at his country villa in Arcetri, where in 1642 he died at the age of 78. Five years before his death, Galilei went blind. What had made the scientist recant the work of his life? Some people believe that the sick and feeble old man showed weakness and disrespect him for it. Others believe that his recantation gave Galilei the possibility to finish his last work that laid the basis for scientific mechanics. Although he formally recanted the new teaching of the world structure, Galilei indeed remained its convinced supporter. According to a legend, just after the trial, Galilei said the following, and yet it moves. These words became the symbol of the struggle for the scientific truth.